Okay, so next experiment is recycling aluminum chemically, uh, but it's really an experiment we're going to investigate uh, theoretical yield and percent yield. Um, so a reaction is conducted and there's a specific amount that can be made theoretically of the products. All right? So based on the reactants, you know how much products can be made theoretically. And seldom uh, is that theoretical capability, theoretical capacity met. Uh, typically, you, you don't get the full amount that's possible. And so there's a, something called percent yield that we use to calculate uh, the efficiency, basically, of a reaction. How much of the product did you make compared to how much you could have made theoretically? Uh, and so this reaction is really an investigation to that. But I want to introduce uh, some of the ideas behind the calculations that we use in calculating percent yield. And I'm going to use this reaction right here. Uh, this, I believe, is known as the Haber process. And it's used in the manufacture of ammonia. Uh, which is important for fertilizers. So we have hydrogen gas, H2, and we react it with nitrogen gas to make ammonia. So when you're faced with a percent yield or a theoretical yield calculation, you need to make sure that the equation, the chemical equation, is balanced first. That's the first thing you need to do. And this one's not, but it's pretty easy to balance. We can put a 2 here, coefficient in front of the ammonium, ammonia, and then this would just be 3 over here, and that would make the equation balanced. So 3 moles of hydrogen gas reacts with 1 mole of nitrogen gas to produce 2 moles of ammonia gas. Okay. So here's the question. Suppose that we start with 10 grams of H2, 10.0 grams. That's how much we start with in the reaction. Let's assume this is an excess. The nitrogen is an excess. So we have plenty of nitrogen okay, to react with all the hydrogen. So if this reaction proceeds, the hydrogen runs out first, and we have plenty of nitrogen left over. Right? So that's an excess. That means how much of ammonia we can make depends solely on how much hydrogen we're starting with. Right? This is always an excess. Okay, so to do this calculation, we need to find the number of moles of hydrogen. So we have 10 grams of H2. And for every one mole of H2, there are 2.016 grams of H2. So that's, that will give us the number of moles of H2 that we have with this 10 grams. But we need to know how many moles of ammonia we can make. And so we need a conversion to get us from moles of H2 to moles of ammonia. And we use the stoichiometry of the chemical equation up here to get into moles of ammonia that can be produced. There are two moles of ammonia. produced from every three moles of H2. And the next thing we want to do is get into grams of ammonia. That can be prepared. So starting with 10 grams of H2, how many grams of ammonia can be prepared? There are 17.031 grams of ammonia for every one mole of ammonia. Okay, so you make sure you cancel. Okay, so we do this calculation, and we end up with grams of ammonia. That's what's left. That's what we want. So it looks like our calculation is going to work. Run through that. 10 divided by 2.016 multiplied by 2 divided by 3, and then multiply by 17.031. And that gives me 56. I have three significant figures over here, so that's what's going to limit us. 56.3 
grams of ammonia. Okay. So this is the theoretical yield. That is the theoretical yield. So starting with 10 grams of, of H2, theoretically we could produce 56.3 grams of ammonia, assuming that nitrogen is in excess. And we've defined it that way in our, our question, our, our problem. All right, so percent yield. Suppose we do this reaction. Suppose 10 grams, 10.0 grams of H2, produces, uh, let's come up, 42.3 grams of ammonia. Okay, so that's how much we theoretically could have made. This is how much we actually made. So in actuality, when we started off with this, we only produced 42.3 grams of ammonia. There are all kinds of reasons why this may be the case. Okay? Uh, there could be an equilibrium situation that we have to deal with, and you'll learn about that next semester about equilibrium. Uh, maybe you know we lose some of this hydrogen gas. It escapes from our reactor before all of it can react. Or maybe some of the ammonia gas escapes. We produced ammonia, but some of it escapes our reactor, and we're only able to isolate 42.3 grams. And so those are those are two or three variables that may limit uh, our actual yield from equaling equaling our theoretical yield. So percent yield. This calculation is just the actual yield over the theoretical yield. So our actual yield. 42.3 grams divided by our theoretical yield multiplied by 100 for a percent. And that gives you 75.1% yield. So that's how you do a percent yield calculation. Now, in your lecture, you may be already doing these types of problems. And uh, lecture, a lot of times, you have to identify what is the limiting reactant, right? The limiting reactant. And the limiting reactant is the one you run out of first. But in this problem, I went ahead and defined it early on. I just told you that we had excess nitrogen and that hydrogen was going to be our limiting. And that will be the same thing, same situation, for the experiment that uh, we're going to do the conversion of aluminum into alum. Alum. Alum is a mineral. Aluminum is an element. And so this is the department handout. You'll have this available in the module. And this is the reaction that we're running. It looks pretty complex, but it's really pretty, pretty simple over, overall. It's a two-step reaction. So we start with aluminum. All these are in excess. Right? All the reagents that you see down here are in excess. So aluminum, I'm telling you right now, is going to be the limiting reactant. Right? Our percent yield, our theoretical yield, is going to be based on the amount of aluminum we're starting with. This right here, all of this, not that, not that. This is the overall reaction down here that you need to look at. Okay? All of this right here. That is alum. Okay? This entire chemical formula is alum. And it precipitates out as a solid. In fact, it crystallizes out as, as a solid after our reaction. Okay? So we start with aluminum. And you need to calculate a theoretical yield of alum that can be produced based on the amount of aluminum you're starting with. It's going to be done the same way the calculation just showed you with hydrogen and nitrogen. So all of these are excess. Aluminum is the limiting. So based on the number of moles of your aluminum starting with, aluminum you're starting with, you can calculate the number of moles of alum you can produce. And based on that, you can calculate the mass of alum that you can produce, theoretically. But we'll do the experiment, and I will isolate alum crystals and weigh those and that will be the actual yield 
And what I isolate and I show in the experiment video, that will be the actual yield. But based on the mass of aluminum that I, I show you in the experiment, you're going to calculate the theoretical yield. So actual divided by theoretical multiplied by 100 will be percent yield. In essence, that is all this experiment is about. You don't need any of this other stuff. These are procedures you would have followed. And that's just a worksheet. And you wouldn't even use this worksheet if you were in the lab. You would have just gone straight to the notebook. Okay. So you'll do your notebook as you normally would for this experiment. All right. That's all I have.